In this video, I'll be showing you how to make text and images pop in your videos. In other words, turn this into this. Hey everyone, it's Mike from Big Byte, and let's talk about making images and text pop. We want to draw the audience's attention to whatever it is you're looking to call out. A great way to do that is by using motion, contrast, and audio to help emphasize your point. Before we jump into Resolve, let me show you where you could grab some free assets for your videos. For an arrow icon, I'm going to be using an arrow I found on icons8.com. And this one looks good. Just be sure to follow any licensing requirements if you're using assets that are not your own. For icons8.com, I need to be sure to add a link to their site in the video description. A great spot to get free sound effects is freesound.org. I'm already logged in, so I just need to search for a whoosh or a pop sound and pick the one I want. Awesome, now we have everything that we need to get started, so let's jump into Resolve. All right, so now we are in Resolve and I have my clip set up, so this is where we're starting off with. In other words, turn this into this. So to spice this up, I'm going to add in some arrows and also the title of what we're talking about. So in this case, it's going to be Apple AirPods. So the first thing that I'm going to do is find exactly where I want the text to pop up. So for me, it's going to be somewhere around here, right where I actually settle down and the product is now stationary. Awesome. So right here, it looks good. So now I'm going to add some arrows. So this is how I typically set up my media pool and it's by file type. So is it a video? Is it an image? Is it an audio file? Um, so right now I'm looking for the arrows that we downloaded before. So I will just jump into my images folder and then I will click and drag this image right here. This looks pretty low resolution right now and that is just based off what I downloaded. So I downloaded the 96 pixel version. Uh, anything larger than this will actually require you to pay for a subscription on this particular site. Uh, so what I'm going to do is again, click on the image down in the timeline, and then I'm going to adjust the zoom until it doesn't look so pixelated. Um, so I would say right about here at 30% uh, looks pretty good to me. And then I'm actually going to um, rotate these and I'm going to add multiple arrows. So I don't like things to be perfectly square while I'm doing videos. Um, to me, it's not as interesting. Uh, so I will just rotate this and, you know, pop that right here. And then I'm going to control C or copy this um, arrow image, but I'm actually gonna drag this up to video three before I paste. So after I click uh, control V and paste it in, it will paste it in the same source. So when I copied it in video two and then drag it up to video three and then pasted it, it pasted it in video two. So this is just a, a quick, easy way uh, to copy and paste images where you're not overriding your other video source. So now for this one, I'm going to change the rotation angle, um, something about there, and kind of shift this around. So that looks pretty good right here. I'm thinking right at the top, I actually want to have a little box come down to actually tell you what the product is. So in this case, Apple AirPods. So in order to do that, I'm not just gonna have text here since I have the guitars in the background that may be a little bit difficult to read. Um, so I'm going to want to put a rectangle, a colorful rectangular box um, behind the text. Uh, so that's a lot easier to read. So to do that, I'm going to come to the effects library and then click in the generators 
and then I actually want a gradient color. So I'm gonna grab this four color gradient. I know I'm, I'm gonna want it to end at the same time, so I'll put that there. So the first thing I'm gonna do is size this. Um, so I'm gonna come up into the settings. So now that I have the gradient, I'm going to unlink the zoom. So the reason I'm doing this and not just adjusting the crop is you could actually tell if you look at the gradient, um, if you look at the color red in the top left, as I crop it, the red gets cropped off altogether. And that's not something that I want. Well, I am going to change the colors and make it uh, more simple. I still want that gradient pattern. So I'm actually going to unlink. Um, so again, once you have this little chain link grayed out, uh, that means you're unlinked. And now I could go ahead and adjust the zoom on here. And this is going to just adjust the size of the asset. And you'll notice that now I'm not cropping out that red. So I'll do the same thing with the Y until I get it about the size that I want. And so I'll be honest, I really don't know how big this needs to be, um, but that's okay. We're, we're experimenting, we're playing around right now. I don't know, I think that looks good. Then I'm gonna come back to the generator. And so it looks like I wanna keep this kind of color scheme. So it's a like blue and purple. So I'm actually going to keep these blues here and change these to a more purpley color. So um, I'm actually gonna just click on screen picker and then select that color there and then come down to the yellow and click on screen picker and find another. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, and now I'm going to come back down to the effects library and click on titles. And here we need text. So we have the options for text and text plus. So text plus just allows you to customize a lot of different options. Um, for this, we could just use text, but I'll show you the difference real fast. So if I jump in here and come into the title section, you can see that it gives me the option to adjust the font family, the font face, the color, the size, and a whole bunch of other attributes. I could switch over to the settings, and again, we have transform, cropping, dynamic zoom, and composite like you typically will. However, now if I grab text plus and we look at that option, under title, you could see we now have layout, transform, shading, image, settings, uh, and even more. So a good thing to look for is if you are not seeing what you want to adjust on text, always grab text plus to look for it there. Or what I typically do is just always use text plus. So now that I have the text added, I'm going to change it from custom title to Apple AirPods. Um, these are old ones. I don't know which ones these are, and it's pretty irrelevant to what we're talking about. So we'll just leave it there. Uh, so now I'll go over to settings and just adjust the position to make sure I could get this exactly where I want it, which will be somewhere visually in the center. Now, of course, you don't have to use Open Sans. It's your default font, so you could go through here and pick whichever font that you want. I'm usually a big fan of Railway. So I'm actually good with this size and even the color selection. I think the white really does still stand out and pop on this, so I'm actually okay with leaving this as white. So if we look at what we have now, this is what it looks like. So this looks pretty good so far. Uh, now we're just gonna add some audio design. So I'm going to add in a ding. I found this off of freesound.org, just like the whoosh. I just think the ding is gonna sound a little bit better than, well, a whoosh. So I'm gonna come into the audio folder and grab this ding and then pull it down. This. 
and that's getting there. It's getting a little bit better. Um, there are a few things that we want to do, uh, and that is adjust the audio level. So I'm actually going to slide out the mixer a little bit. Actually, I don't have to because I only have two audio sources. And I'm just going to check the levels of the input to make sure that the ding isn't too overpowering. So I can see from the peak levels here that it is a little high. So I'm going to drag this down to about negative 20 right here. And I think that's a more appropriate audio level. And while I'm here, I'm actually just going to decrease the audio level one this. to make sure it's in a. This into this. There we go. That's pretty good. And so now that I have this ding on audio two, whenever I add any other audio effects, rather it's a whoosh, a ding, you know, whatever other audio effects that I'll add later on the video, I'm going to keep it in audio two since this master track level has already been adjusted. So I know anything that I bring in is not going to be overpowering on the video and it's just gonna make my life a little bit easier. Now, I actually don't want to add any animations or transitions onto any of these effects that we just added. The main reason is I believe that the dang sound effect really does just make it look good when it just appears. What I am going to do though is make sure that when it pops up and when the sound starts is aligned. So if I look right here, my audio clip is aligned. However, you can see the sound waves start a little bit late. So I'm actually just going to click the plus to zoom in on here and then just manually try to visual line it up here. So now let's see what this looks like. There we go. That's a lot more on time. Since I am using the ding and I like the way that everything just pops up, I would just leave it like this. However, let's say you were using a whoosh instead of a ding. A whoosh is kind of like a motion of someone swinging a pole or something. That's the way they actually make the sound. So I visualize actually something swinging in or sliding in quickly. So if I were to replace this ding with the whoosh, I don't know, to me it doesn't really have the same effect. So if I'm using the whoosh, I like to use a transition. So I would actually come in here and use the slide transition. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna grab it and slide it. Unfortunately, you have to do it on every effect. So uh, you could do it for a transition where you could kind of see this where it's kind of 50% on and 50% off or completely on the effect. I'm gonna move it so that it's completely on the effect and I'm actually gonna add it on to everything. So from the text to the gradient to the icons, I will add it on everything. And then I'm going to click in each one and hold, uh, I'm on Windows, so I'm gonna hold control to select every transition. And then I'm going to adjust each transition. So one thing that I do know is if you look at this, the duration is currently one second or 60 frames. So you could see how long this is and you could see the audio trail effect. So we really need everything to kind of happen and end right about this area right here where the sound waves end. So I'm just gonna play around with this until you can kind of see it there. And it kind of looks like 10 frames is looking good. So let's see what that looks like. Now, the only thing that I don't like is the direction. As far as the duration, everything is looking good. Uh, visually, it's lining up with the sound, but I don't like the direction. So I want the title to come down from the top, the arrows on the right hand side to come in from the right to the left. And you know what, this arrow, I also want to drop in down from the top since I don't want it to come over my face uh, from the left to right. So what I'm gonna do is I need to find, I need to find this arrow, which I believe might be this one. So I could tell just by adjusting the position real fast. And so yeah, that looks good. So it's gonna be this effect here the four color gradient and the text plus, I'm gonna select the transition effect. And for the preset, I'm gonna to do top down. 
Then for these other two arrows, I'm going to do from the right to the left. And so now if we go back and play, I think that looks much better with the whoosh. Now, personally, uh, I think the ding looks better, so I'm just going to remove all these transitions that we have, remove the whoosh audio effect, and drag the, the ding back in, and then adjust the timing. And that's how you can make text and images pop in your videos better. If this video helped you out, give us a thumbs up and also consider subscribing if you're interested in other content creation tutorials. And until next time, see ya.